The date was July 16, 1999, when John F. Kennedy Jr., this guy right here, his wife, Carolyn Bissett, right here on the right, and her sister, Lauren Bissett, here on the left, took off from Essex County Airport in Caldwell, New Jersey. Back here at Google Earth, Caldwell, New Jersey, Essex County Airport. He's right here. The plan was to fly from here all the way to here, Martha's Vineyard Airport, this airport here, drop Lauren Bassett off, then continue on to Hyannis, Massachusetts Airport, Barnstable County Airport, which was right here so that JFK and his wife could attend his cousin's wedding the next day. But something went terribly wrong. About an hour and a half before the plane crash, JFK Jr. arrived here at this gas station across the street from the airport. He put gas in his car, and he also went inside and bought a banana, a bottle of water, and some batteries. This was something he did before going to the airport on every flight. It was very routine for him. And according to the store employees, the only thing different is that he was later than usual. He was there a few minutes after 8, when normally he would be there between 5 and 7 p.m. He also just had a cast removed from his leg where he had broken his ankle from a paragliding accident, so he was limping. And according to the information I found, he also had his sister-in-law, Lauren Bissett, in the car with him. After fueling up, he just went across the street to the airport right in here. Originally, he wanted to depart the airport around 6.30 p.m., but due to traffic delays, Lauren's work hours, and Carolyn's shopping, they were delayed about two hours. And from the information I found, I'm about 95% certain his airplane was kept right here in this hangar. I'm not sure which side, but it was kept in this hangar right here. Now, normally what pilots do is they will take their airplane, taxi out to the end of the runway, rev the engine up to check it and make sure everything is working. But JFK Jr. that day revved his engine up just outside of the hangar where his plane was being kept. A person who witnessed this said he could tell that the pilot was in a hurry. So JFK and his passengers taxied out to this end of the runway and took off from runway 22 at about 8.39 p.m. Took off from here, headed this way, heading south, southwest. After takeoff, he did a sweeping right turn and went on a 55 degree heading, staying at about 1400 feet, which is about 425 meters above the ground. And he flew north until he reached the Hudson River, approximately in this general area right here. Actually turned northeast until he got to the Hudson River, approximately right in here. And when he reached the Hudson River, he turned north for about six miles and began to climb. While he was climbing, he began a turn to about 100 degrees heading. And when he was approximately right here, approximately over here in this general area, he leveled out at 5,500 feet or 1,675 meters. He maintained that altitude and that heading, and he crossed just north of Bridgeport here and ended up crossing over land and over the ocean between Bridgeport and New Haven, right in here. Then he followed along the Connecticut and Rhode Island coast all the way to this point right here, which is Point Judith. From Point Judith, there was about a 33-mile or 53-kilometer stretch of ocean to cross before he made it to the west end of Martha's Vineyard Island right here. 
and 34 miles out from the airport, or about 55 kilometers out from Martha, Martha's Vineyard Airport, which would place him approximately right in here, he began a descent of about 400 to 800 feet per minute, which is 121 to 244 meters per minute, at about 160 knots. He stopped his descent at about 2,200 feet, or 670 meters, and if you're averaging about 600 feet per minute, that would have taken him, in, taken him approximately five minutes to lose all that altitude. But about 30 seconds before stopping his descent, he began a right turn in a southerly direction. So he started a gradual right turn. He stopped his turn and began a climb that lasted about 30 seconds, and he climbed another 300 feet, which is about 100 meters, to 2,500 feet or 762 meters, and he continued in a southerly, easterly direction. About 50 seconds later, he began a left turn and climbed to 2,600 feet, which means he gained another 100 feet or about 30 meters to 792 meters. And while he was in this left turn, he began a descent that reached 900 feet per minute or 274 meters per minute. And I believe this is the point where he began to get disoriented. When he reached an easterly direction, he stopped turning while maintaining the same rate of descent. A few seconds later, he began a right turn, and as his turn rate increased, his rate of descent increased to over 4,700 feet per minute, or 1,432 meters per minute. The last reading they got of his plane was approximately 1,100 feet above the surface of the ocean, going down at over 4,700 feet per minute, or 1,400 meters per minute, and it was about a quarter of a mile or a little less than half a kilometer away from where they found the plane right in here. Four days later, on July 20th, 1999, his plane and the deceased bodies were found right here in this spot under 120 feet of water or 36 meters of water. Autopsy report said they were all killed upon impact, which means instantly. The final NTSB report attributed the accident to spatial disorientation. JFK Jr. had no points of reference to orient himself on, and he did not have enough experience with instrument flight rules, nor was he qualified to fly under instrument flight rules. As a result, himself, his wife, and his sister-in-law were all killed, and their bodies were found under the water right here at this exact point. So there you have it. The location and flight route of John F. Kennedy's fatal plane accident, which occurred July 16th, 1999, right here on Google Earth.